I'm going to create this Helldivers 2 inspired environment in Unreal Engine 5. I really enjoyed this game and I was inspired by the planet Ocean to create this scene. The game already looks amazing, especially as it was put together in the Stingray game engine. My name is Tamás, I work for Dash. It is a world building assistant for Unreal. In this video I'm going to show you my favorite tools. I will demonstrate how to create a playable level with our easy to use procedural tools and without having to learn complex notes or scripts. You can get a full feature, free trial on our website if you want to follow along. After all this, there's nothing left but to dive in. I create a new project and I select the third person template. Now I create a new level, an empty one. Next I click on the dash icon, which brings up the dash toolbar. I type in the word terrain and click on the create terrain option. Dash creates a terrain for us. I set the scale and play around with the values. I'm gonna drop in a material that I downloaded from the Megascans library. Next I'm gonna use the dash curve tool and I'm gonna scatter some cliffs on it. I type in the word curve into the dash toolbar and select the curve tool option. I set the minimum spacing to 60, then I click on the start drawing button. I draw the line on the ground. As you can see I can adjust the points of the curve individually. I have downloaded the cliff mesh. Holding down Ctrl, I drag it under the curve and select Scatter on Selection. Here I can adjust the density and rotate them 180 degrees on the z-axis so the mountains face inward. I can drag the curve points anywhere and the scattered objects will follow. I want to place smaller cliffs in front of the larger ones, so I do the same method again. I will adjust the materials a bit. I select the mountains and click on the edit material icon on the dash toolbar. I give them a greener tint and lower the saturation and brightness. And I also set the roughness to 0.2. In the next step I will show you the dash AI tagging system. It helps to tag assets in my project so I can easily search for them based on attributes, not just names. I can already see two projects here where I have completed the AI tagging. The advantage of this is that it's not necessary to migrate assets between projects. They are accessible in any new project with the help of Dash. In this project I'll be using models from the Mission to Minerva Kitbash pack, which you can get for free. You can find the link in the description. I also use some assets from the Science Laboratory pack. As you can see, there are currently zero assets tagged. I select the folders I want to tag and click on the Compute button to start the process. This might take a while, so go and make a coffee or watch another Dash tutorial on our channel. The asset icons have appeared in the Dash library. Now I can search for properties. If I type in the word storage, it will show assets tag with storage. Like this container. I can also manually add tags. I select a few assets from the library and drag them into the scene. I will set up an outpost here. I can rotate and scale the assets with hotkeys. Here you can see the combinations. I want to place a few containers on these platforms. I can simply do this by dragging them in and if I need to stack a few, I can do it manually by duplicating the items. But here I want a larger stack of containers. This is where I will use the grid scatter tool. I type grid into the dash toolbar and select the grid scatter tool. For both the grid origin and instance mesh I use this model. I adjust the values here. I can set the pivot point to the center by typing pivot and center into the dash toolbar. Next, let's place some larger rocks into the scene. I drag and drop a few larger assets I downloaded from the Megascans library and roughly position them into the scene. The next step is to scatter medium sized rocks across the area. I select the terrain and while holding down control, I drag in the rock model and click on the scatter on selection. The surface scatter window pops up, where I can set the parameters like size and density.
And now I'm going to draw a curve here, along which I will mask out some rocks. Setting the minimum spacing to 60, I click on the start drawing and draw it roughly here. You can edit and move this curve later, just drag it and the scattered objects attached to it will follow. I select the rocks and in the edit window I scroll down to the proximity masking section. Here I add my curve as an object. I click on invert and enter a number for distance. Now the rocks are scattered along the curve. I actually want to have a path along the curve with no rocks. In proximity mask 2 I add the curve again, set a distance and you can see a nicely masked path appeared. Wherever I move the curve points, the scattered objects will follow. Now I select these few meshes and add them to the proximity mask 3, which will mask out the rocks around them. I will scatter another model across the ground. I will use the noise masking tool here to set how frequently they should be scattered. Now I will scatter some smaller rocks and pebbles. I scatter them on the ground first, then I adjust the scale and density. I leave them quite dense. I select these assets and add them to the proximity mask. I invert the masking tool and set the distance. I can adjust the falloff and sink them a bit more into the ground. With the noise mask, I adjust the break up a bit more to make the distribution less dense. I will scatter now another layer, which I will also thin out using the noise mask. I also scatter a slightly larger rock model too. It's time to scatter some grass. I've chosen this tundra grass from Megascans. I select the terrain and by holding down control, I scatter them on the ground. I select those large rocks again and use them for masking. I think we don't need that many different models. The grass in the game is also simple. I delete these and I adjust the scale a bit. With falloff, I can make the edges of the grass more natural. I will use the noise mask here as well and add some variations. I scatter some grass around this model as well. Since my mesh is lower than the grass, the grass appears in this area. I deal with this issue later. I also scatter some smaller grass patches on the ground. Now let's go back to our building and set up the outpost. To start, I place a concrete barrier here. This time I will use the draw curve tool. And with Ctrl plus the middle mouse button, I can adjust the point density. I select two models from the library and drag them onto the curve. We have also a great tutorial on our channel about path scattering. You can watch it by clicking here. Let's add some grass around the building. I open up the scatter icon by selecting it and clicking on the tool icon. I select some assets from the dash library to decorate this area. I will mask out the grass from under these props.
Now let me show you the Dash Physics tool. I will scatter these two assets. I type physics into the Dash toolbar and select the physics tool. A new bar pops up. Let's make sure that the assets are set to dynamic and click on play to start the simulation. Another great function of the physics tool is the paint function. I selected this rubble pack from the Megascans library. Holding down Ctrl, I drag them into the scene and click on Place Overlap. I place each version of the rubble pack into the scene. I select all of them and click on Paint to scatter them around the scene. With Shift plus the middle mouse button, I can adjust the brush size and while holding down Ctrl, Shift and the left mouse button, I can adjust the scattering density. Now I simply scatter some rubble in a few places. This building looks quite clean. I will select some decals from the library by holding down Shift. And while holding down Ctrl, I will drag them onto the building. Dash will scatter the decals on the selected surface. I can adjust the seed randomly. I will increase the scale. Sometimes a few decals end up in the wrong place. I can delete those. I drag a few more decals manually onto the building. Let's deal with the black flickering. Simply enter this command. And for lesser foliage, type in this. The great advantage of Dash is that elements created with it are non-destructive. You can adjust them anytime. These scattered instances can be converted into individual meshes, allowing single object editing. I think I'm generally satisfied with the layout, but in some places I like to delete or move a few objects. For example, I want to bake these medium-sized rocks. I type bake into the Dash toolbar and select the bake instances option. I add the selected rocks with the plus button. Dash has generated the individual objects from me, retaining the original scatter setup, which we can hide or delete. Now I can adjust the rocks individually. I can do the same with grass. I type foliage into the toolbar and select convert instances to foliage. This way we get grass that we can edit with the classic foliage editor. Now I will clean out some places. I drop in a few more props around the outpost to make the area more lived in. I will also scatter some decals here. I make the surrounding clips too. I delete some of them. Next I will adjust the colors of the rocks. I set the hue to 0.1 to get a greenish shade. I decrease the saturation and the brightness. I do the same for the other rocks. Now let's talk about the Dash Wine tool. It's available in the Dash version 1.7. I simply select an atlas from the Dash library. You can make these available in the Dash library by downloading them in the standalone Quixel Bridge app and by setting the download folder here. I select the rock and while holding down Ctrl, I drag the atlas onto the rock. I choose the Create Vines on Selection option. And there we go. I can set its parameters as I like. I'll make it a bit longer.
I can set the scale of the leaves here. For the material, I simply drag a tree bark material onto the branches. Creating a nighttime scene in Unreal isn't an easy task, but there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube on this topic. We can save a lot of time by using the Ultra Dynamics Sky plugin instead of messing around with the built in lighting tools. I have deleted all my light sources and I drag the Ultra Dynamics Sky blueprint into the scene. And now our scene is lit up again. I set the time to midnight. I set the night brightness to, let's say, 3. For the exposure, I take in the instant exposure adjustment and I will enable a volumetric fog also. Now the scene is coming together. I will brighten up this building a bit to make it more visible. I will drag a rectangular light in. It's important to turn off volumetric scattering so that the light source doesn't show up in the fog. It also set the indirect lighting to zero. Once we're done with this, I scattered a few light poles that I modeled in Blender. Basically just a cylinder with two materials. I add some flying particles to the scene. I type in particle into the dash toolbar and select it. I will also add some puddles. I simply type water into the dash toolbar and it will generate the plane with the water material on it. I will also drop in some smoke blueprints. You can also find the link for this down below. And here I scattered a few bloodstained decals in some places. And I can adjust the color too. And I'm going to scatter these yellow mushrooms near some larger rocks. This area here is quite empty, so I will scatter some barrels here. Some decals also. Find a very good Helldiver and the Biotitan model on the Helldiver's Archive Discord server. Since these are Blender projects with Blender materials, I bake a new texture for them, which I will be using in Unreal. I also animated the Titan a bit, which I exported to Unreal. You can also find the link to the server down below. I dropped the Titan into the scene. It will be needed for the cinematics later. Now I drag a post-process volume into the scene. I set it to unbound. I play around with the values. It's time to replace the player character with our Helldiver model. Matt S. Plan's tutorial does a great job of explaining the steps. The link to the tutorial can be found below. Now I want to create a few cinematic shots for the scene. I will create a dash camera. And I will set the aspect ratio. I can adjust post-processing and the color grading here as well. Bloom, film grain, fringe, and so on.
If I don't have a specific idea of what grade the shot should have, I can choose a preset. I choose this one. We can also select an image from our computer and drag it into the dash toolbar. The selected camera's color grade will take on the color properties of the image. This is also a new dash 1.7 feature. But let's stick with the pale greenish blue setting. I will create another camera and I will set up another angle. Here I just add the light beam to the background. For the cinematic shots, I also add a few dash fog cards. I type in fog and select it. I can easily adjust it. I want a very faint fog, just enough to be visible. And with that, the scene is pretty much done. I hope you find this video useful. I had a lot of fun putting it together. If you like this video, consider joining our Discord server or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.